Moving right along here on Cudlow, President Joe Biden speaking at the Asia-Pacific Economic Conference in San Francisco once again emphasized all these meaningless cliches. We were just talking about it. De-risking or diversifying, or earlier it was de-escalating the relationship with China. Here's a little patchwork of it. Listen and weep. Let me be clear. We are de-risking and diversifying our economic relationship with the PRC, not decoupling. We're going to continue our commitment to diplomacy, to avoid surprises, to prevent misunderstandings. A stable relationship between the world's two largest economies is not merely good for the two economies, but for the world. I just don't think that's a foreign policy. I don't understand it. The elephant in the room, Mr. Biden will never confront it, is the fact that China's worldwide strategy is aimed squarely at upending America's influence and America's commitment to democratic values. The United States is a democracy. It's a free country. China is a communist country, not a democracy. It is totalitarian. It is repressive. And it is most certainly not a free nation. Now, Joe Biden somehow pretends not to notice this. I think that's a big mistake. I mean, I think Americans are noticing it pretty well. And I think one reason Mr. Biden's foreign policy approval ratings have fallen rock bottom is that he avoids a realistic picture of the world scene, especially China. But we see the same Biden instincts as he tries desperately to avoid conflict with Iran, courses cut and run in Afghanistan, and the failure to deter Russia in the Ukraine. The Biden policies are about appeasement, not deterrence. Ronald Reagan's policies, who I worked for when I was younger, Reagan's policies were about deterrence, not appeasement. Reagan said, we win, you lose. Reagan was never bashful about outlining the conflict with the old Soviet Union. To my way of thinking, the Biden-Xi meetings were nothing more than a kind of a phony photo op. And of course, Biden refuses to acknowledge that China's U.S. sanction-breaking oil imports from Russia and Iran, well, they're financing two major wars against America. That's the reality. A stable relationship preventing misunderstandings, to use Biden's words, would not include these outright attacks against America. China is financing these two wars. And it is so terribly ironic that China is using the very fossil fuels to fight America that Joe Biden and all his greedy minions detest so much. China has weaponized fossil fuels. Biden has surrendered. You know, if Donald Trump's drill baby drill policies had continued into a second term, the U.S. would be somewhere as around 15 or 16 million barrels per day right now, probably on the way to 18 million barrels per day in a couple of years. And at that pace, the world oil price would be something closer to $40 a barrel. Not 80 or 100 or even 125 where it was a year and a half ago. And if that were the case, then we wouldn't really particularly care whether China was buying oil from Iran or Russia. It would be a drop in the bucket, okay? Now, this is so much a part of Joe Biden's sad tale as president. It's not just the middle class has to pay so much more for energy, food, and other necessities, or that real wages keep falling and that working folks have huge problems affording the Biden economy. It's that Biden's socialist Green New Deal has enormously empowered China. And this, this is fundamentally unstable. So, by the way, is a $350 billion trade deficit due in large measure because of China's continued unfair trading practices. And then comes the grandest irony of all. At this photo op in San Francisco, as I mentioned with Brett Baer, the State Department announces a new era of climate cooperation with China. But wait a minute. Don't the Biden greenies know that China is the biggest polluter in the world? And wait another minute. In 2022, China permitted an average of two new coal-fired power plants per week. That's over 100 a year. They're already leaving the world with 1,100 coal plants, and they've got another 300 coal plants in the pipeline. Now, personally, I don't care. I'm for clean coal. I want to end the war on fossil fuels. And I want to end the Green New Deal. The Green New Deal is dragging the U.S. down all over the world. I am just sorry that China is the one that's doing it. And I do blame Joe Biden for all of that. 
And that is my riff 